Coast Guard planes are flying overhead at night, spraying Corexit. You know, you're asking me, do you think it's getting on land? I'm telling you it's getting sprayed on land. You know, and I know from my work with pesticide applications that even if you have a very good pilot, the drift can be of concern, but the secondary effects are the kind of volatilization, evaporation, and then movement. So it's applied, it sits on the surface, it comes on up a little bit, and then it moves around. And you know wave action, you know a bird landing there and then swim, coming over here and landing there is gonna be another mechanism to transport it. So do I think that there's dispersants mixing with our everyday lives? Absolutely. The Corexit dispersant issue is a complex and scary one. It's scary from the point of a toxicologist. It's complex from the point of the resource manager. My doctoral advisor, Dr. Ron Chardima at UC Davis, was actually on the panel that they had used to advise for the dispersant use. They use a cost-benefit analysis. The costs of cleaning up the shore outweigh the costs of applying dispersants at the sea. Therefore, they perceive the benefit of the dispersants outweigh their negative effects. Okay. What value can you really put on the entire ecosystem of the Gulf that is threatened? They've turned a two-dimensional problem of oil floating on the surface into a three-dimensional problem of oil bound with Corexit, creating substances we know very little about, you know, transforming in the environment through bacteria process into other chemicals that we know absolutely nothing about that is going to be impacting just about every single marine organism, including ourselves, okay? People need to realize that their water, their air, the sand they're walking on, the things they're touching when they wake up in the morning are coated with this stuff. And if you see it in a high concentration, it looks like radiator fluid. It is not a pretty sight. And the stuff is toxic. You know, the tests say no effect. I can tell you from managing those tests as a professional that you need to know exactly what test gave you what effect that you tested. So if it was no effect on the survival of seven days of the fish, what happened to that fish at 10 days? Okay, that was my doctoral thesis. The pesticides that killed no fish at 96 hours, which is the EPA deadline, 90% of them died two weeks later. These were embryonic salmon. There are a lot of chemical effects that are not being measured by the standard EPA tests. The dispersant takes the oil, breaks it up, makes it soluble with water, right? Oil by itself won't mix with water. You put the dispersant in, it mixes with the water. So no longer are you looking at a case with oil here, water there, you're looking at a case where now we don't have so much of an oil slick. It's gone while it's in the water column, so it's affecting more life. Now, how does it do that? It basically disrupts the natural ability of oil to bond with itself. Oil bilipid layers next to each other are the very basis of life. Each of us is made out of cells. Those cells are nothing more than an oil layer surrounding our DNA, surrounding our proteins and our RNA and all the other molecules talking to each other. You put in a chemical that directly disrupts that basic biological structure and you are putting yourself at risk from umpteen effects. This is a single cell trying to reproduce in the ocean and it is destroyed. I can tell you from personal experience, if that organism in that test beaker is paralyzed and incapacitated and its heart rate is half of normal, it is counted as alive. If that heart beats once in a minute, it's alive. And you will see a score of no effect if that's a mortality endpoint test. That is gonna kill all of these larval organisms, okay? And it's not just sea turtles that are reproducing right now, it's the birds and it's everything. So this spill came at a really bad time. Understanding what's behind these tests is part of understanding how toxic these chemicals are. And it's a big question mark right now. We are producing an experiment in the Gulf the likes that no one has ever seen. And the top scientists admit that. So we're all part of the experiment. How do you feel?